Welcome to the Ohio Ram Show, number 292. Hi, this is Megan Hackman here for the Ohio Ram Show with Jen Orr. Uh, Jen's doing virtual raw, and uh, how about you introduce yourself, Jen? Hi, I'm Jen Orr, and I am doing uh, virtual raw on the Full Gas platform starting in a week from tomorrow on June 16th. Um, I was the overall winner of the actual race across the West in 2019, so I don't plan on treating this year's virtual race as a, a race race, but just trying to get the miles in and looking forward to to virtually riding from Oceanside to Durango. Well, a huge congrats on your win last year. I think uh, 2019 was a pretty awesome year for female cyclists, and it's pretty yes. cool that you were one of the badasses um, on that scene. <laughs> so congrats. Thank you. Um, so what characteristics do you possess that um, make you well-suited for ultra-distance cycling? Uh, definitely, I have always been, as long as I've been cycling, I've been pretty good at, at pacing myself, which is one of the biggest keys in, in ultra-distance cycling is, you know, knowing knowing the pace that you can maintain for whether it's six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, five days, you know, whatever distance you happen to be going. Um, and I've, I've just always been very uh, intrinsically motivated to, you know, um, you know, no one has to drag me out to to do my training. I mean, you know, if there's a workout on my schedule, I'm I'm gonna find a way to get it done. And that's obviously when when you're training for a long distance, you have to be very consistent in your training. Uh, and it can't typically be like, a, yeah, I skipped a few workouts here and there. And uh, I mean, obviously, you can, you know, you gotta listen to your body. But you know, at the same time, you're you can't afford to blow off too many workouts or shorten workouts. You have to keep kind of being able to push through fatigue. That resonates with me as well. And yeah. you can definitely see your pacing has paid off in the past. So why are you doing virtual raw? What, uh, what entices you about this exciting event? Um, it just, it sounded like I, I really didn't have too, I mean, you know, remember we even talked and I said, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. um, I do remember <laughs> that. <laughs> But, you know, it, since then, I kind of listened to, I, I listened to a podcast by my friend Rick, who I think was just on, uh, on your, on the show. Oh, yeah. And uh, he had interviewed uh, uh, Anthony Gordon, who's putting the whole virtual race together. And I just listening to them talk about it and uh, realizing, you know, I, I mean, my main concern was I didn't think I could sit on it, just sit on a trainer for that long. Um, I thought I would, you know, I would kill my knees. I wouldn't, mm. just wouldn't be able to do it. But I realized I can just, you know, put in these miles. I can take 12 days to do 900 and I think it's 950 miles is the actual amount of miles on the, the course. But um, like I can do this over 12 days and I can, I think at the time I was on furlough from work and I wasn't even sure if I'd, I'd be working. But either way, I figured I can. I can go, you know, ride before or after work on the weekends and still get the miles in, and um, and it just sounded like there was, the, you know, it was there was going to be a pretty wide range of people participating all over the world. It just sounded like it would be a cool thing to be a part of. Awesome. Do you have a favorite time for training, like morning, evening? You know, for those long uh, rides, I know you got to spread them out over the day, right. but that is just all day. But uh, <laughs> definitely, I'm a morning person, so I. Uh, uh, like to get up early, get get it done before work. I, I just don't feel right if I go to, like, I just don't feel, I feel weird at work if I don't get that ride in before. And then, you know, on the flip side, it's really tough to drag myself out for a ride or get on the trainer after work when I'm just fatigued and tired. Right. And for work, are you a physical therapist? Physical therapist, yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so what's your, what's your plan like? Are you planning to knock out the yeah. same number of mileage every day or do you have it kind of divided it up or what does that look like? I, yeah, I, I did divide it up. I kind of have a rough schedule of when to complete 
all of the segments, uh, rides that, that are assigned in the order that we have to do them. So I, I am back to work full time. So I'll be, um, yeah, tr probably most days. Well, I think the plan is just every, every weekday I'll be on the bike before work, on the bike after work, you know, long sessions on the, the weekend days. And, um, you know, once I sat down and tried to put together all the miles, I realized this, this is going to be a challenge. There's not going to be a lot of, of down. It's going to be in a very intense 12 days. So. And what does your uh, nutrition and hydration look like? Um, are you going to have that all geared up? Do you have support? Um, I don't at this point have any support. I've thought about uh, recruiting some people to help as far as uh, some helping with nutrition. It's obviously a little different from, you know, a, a race on the road or a continuous race as far as nutrition, hydration. I don't, I'm not riding continuously, it's, but it will be important that I, um, you know, am able to eat the right foods in between, you know, get my, you know, have meals prepped beforehand because I'm just, you know, I'm not going to have much time to, to get meals ready um, mm -hmm. in between rides and work. Um, you know, it, obviously I'm going to be trying to maximize how much sleep I can get every night so I don't, I'm not completely wasted by the, the end of the, the race. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll, basically this, this next few days this weekend, I'll be trying to get as much prepped as far as nutrition meals beforehand. Um, since most of my rides aren't going to be terribly long, other than the weekend days, um, you know, just, I, I won't need a ton of nutrition on the ride itself, the rides themselves, just kind of the keeping my energy up in between. Yeah. I imagine with something, um, like this where you're, you know, competing in the morning and then working and then competing in the evening, just yeah. really, you know, preparing before you ride and, you know, fueling yourself during your workouts and then that recovery is like, super important because you got to get up yeah. in the morning and do it again just like real yeah. raw or round how many hours of sleep did you get during uh raw last year raw, like total slept like an hour and a half or something like that <laughs> <laughs> you're a monster that's crazy <laughs> Um, do you plan on making any more purchases on amazon while you're uh racing do you think you'll have time for that and if so, uh, is there anything you know, you're eyeing up? <laughs> and when I say I made purchases, it was like stuff that I remember like, oh, you know what? I don't think I have enough enough towels to, you know, <laughs> I, I'm going to have to be, you know, knowing I'm going to have to be doing so much more laundry if I'm, you know, riding my bike twice a day. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'm like, yeah, I better get myself more towels because I'm going to be going through a ton of those and I'm not going to want to have to do laundry every single day. Um, you know, stuff like... Um, you know, like lidocaine cream for, you know, in case I get saddle sores and, um, you know, just little things that would pop in my head. Like, oh, yeah, I forgot that I, I usually use, go through a lot of these things. So, you know, you never know. I might, th th what it is, that I just, I'm, you know, sitting on the trainer and think of something. I'm, you know, easy, it's so easy and convenient to, you know, pull, pull up Amazon and two minutes later you're done. And then, you know, I mean, literally stuff I ordered on Saturday showed up yesterday and today so um, you know a day or two later it's 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 here so so it's pretty convenient and and easy and i'm not gonna have time to go to the store so true well i'm not surprised you're making practical purchases i would be ordering like i don't know fuzzy bathrobes <laughs> and bunny slippers <laughs> just this like useless stuff yeah <laughs> and then like three days later i'd be like oh who ordered this crap oh sorry that was me <laughs> the audio books and you know, stuff to stay entertained for all those hours on the, the bike. So well, I guess my last question is, um, do you have advice yes. for someone who is uh, ultra curious or interested in getting into, you know, riding longer distances and hasn't really done it before and maybe has some hesitations? Yeah. Um, I'd say just start, start out with some of the smaller uh, events. You know, we've got the, the 6, 12, 24 hour time trial world championship that we're both very familiar with. And uh, hopefully they're able to do that. I think it's, is it October 9th and 10th this year? Something uh, like that, yeah. Able to, yeah. You know, and they, they have a six hour and a 12 hour race. If you don't think you can ride for, for 24 hours, you can be one of the shorter distances and kind of get into the scene and, you know, hang. I, I think actually they're doing a 24 hour race before the the six and 12 hour race this year so it's a separate day separate event but 
you know, you can, while you're checking in, see what all the, the 24 hour people are doing. Um, you know, as far as just kind of developing the mindset, uh, I know a lot of cyclists just prefer to ride in, in groups or with friends. And, um, you know, I, I know a lot of us, uh, in the ultra cycling world tend to just do a ton of solo riding, um, for, you know, just because honestly, not many people want to go on a 200 mile ride every Saturday, um, that I know. <laughs> and, you know, and you just have to learn to ride your own pace. Whereas a lot of the group rides kind of have these, you know, the, there'll be a sprint at every stoplight or, uh, you know, this, just these changes in pace and for, for ultra, ultra cycling distance, you just, you have to just be able to kind of nail down that, that pace that you, you need to train at and just stay there all day. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of group cyclists, crit racers, other types of cyclists just kind of find that boring. And, um, so yeah, it's kind of developing that mindset and, uh, and, and dialing in that, that pacing element. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I think, you know, it's kind of exciting once you start expanding longer and longer distances by yourself yeah. away from the group and just kind of, you know, discovering a new part of yourself, a new part of your city or, you know, county or yeah. whatever. It's it's exciting and encouraging learning that you can go longer and farther and um, yeah, and then compete. That's another, you know, whole level. So. Yeah, and then some people are more comfortable than others with the competing aspect, so. <laughs> Some people just like to ride. Uh, yeah, and there's lots of there's lots of roads for everyone. Yep. <laughs> I guess that's it. Um, thanks so much for chatting with us, Jen. I'm really excited um, about you know following your dot and seeing how you do. And um, I hope you stay hydrated and fed and uh, kick some butt. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. Well, this is uh, Megan Hackenan with the Ohio Ram Show signing off with our guest, Jen R. Farewell. Let's give him a wave. <laughs> <laughs>